Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to a math tutorial on mathematical induction. So the reason why I've named this uh, the title of the video Mathematical Induction for Dummies is because I've made this tutorial so simple that anyone with a little bit of maths should be able to understand it. So if you're watching this video and um, you have come across mathematical induction for the first time, you were probably quite a bit puzzled by it because people tend to try and explain it with um, too much assumption about what you know already. So I'm going to assume that you know nothing and just start from the real basics. So I'm going to give you a list of numbers. All right, starting from one, I'm going to give you, let's say, six numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can also call this list of numbers a arithmetic sequence, which means that from one number to the next number in the sequence, we're adding a constant term. Okay, so you can see here from each term to the next term, all I'm doing is I'm adding one to it. Okay, and so I'm giving you a list of numbers from one to six, and I want you to add all these numbers together. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, and I want you to type it in the calculator and tell me what the answer is. And hopefully you got the answer 21, otherwise you probably need to go back to some other tutorials. So um, the answer is 21. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a shortcut. Okay, a shortcut so that you don't have to add all these numbers together. So all you do is you're going to get the number at the end. Okay, whatever the end number is in your sequence. You're going to divide that number by 2, okay, which is going to give you 3. And then I want you to multiply that number by the same number here, the number at the end, plus 1. Okay, so you're going to get 6 divided by 2, which is 3, times 6 plus 1, which is 7, and you got 21. So you might say, well, it's probably quicker to just add all the numbers together. Now, what if I gave you an arithmetic sequence with all the numbers up to 100? Right? Are you going to go, if I asked you to find the sum of all of these numbers, are you going to go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4? You're going to type all that into the calculator and tell me what the answer is. Of course not. It's going to waste too much time. So you're going to go 100 divided by 2, right, because 100 is the last number in your sequence, times by 100 plus 1, so that will be 50 times 101. So you just type that in your calculator and you will get 5050. It's a much quicker way. Okay, so now let's write out the formula that I have been using. Okay, the formula that I have been using is that if I want to find the sum of all of these numbers, so each of these numbers I'm going to call it x. Okay, find the sum of all of these individual x values from x is equal to 1 all the way to x is equal to n is equal to n divided by 2 times n plus 1 right so that is the formula that I have been using now what we want to try and do now is to prove that this formula is true. So to prove that this formula or this statement is true for all n. 
right? Because what have we done so far? We have tested it. We have tested it to see that it works for n is a hundred, and we've tested it to see that it works for n is six. But in order to prove this statement, we need to show that it works for any n, right? Uh, so what that means is, uh, for example, if n was equal to twenty-five, okay, I need to prove that this statement will work for one plus two plus three plus four all the way to plus twenty-five. So it's not enough to just do a few examples. We need to utilize what we call mathematical induction. So we're going to use proof by mathematical induction okay to show that this statement is true by using mathematical induction and these are the steps required so step one verify the statement is true for an initial value usually n is equal to one so what that means is we want to check that this statement will work for the lowest possible number of n and in this case n is 1 so let's substitute that into the statement so we got x equals 1 and we're going from 1 to 1 right, add up all the numbers of x starting from 1 ending at 1 is equal to n divided by 2 uh, so it equals, uh, sorry, n is 1, so it's 1 divided by 2 times uh, 1 plus 1, so that's 0 0.5 times 2, which is 1. And that is true, right, because the sum of all the numbers starting from 1 to 1 will just be 1, so it's true. So we have done step one already. Verify this statement is true for an initial value. Now let's do step two. Step two says, assume this statement is true for n equals k, where k is a positive integer. Okay, so we don't know what k is at the moment. It could be 1, could be 2, could be 3. It doesn't matter. We're going to assume that this statement here works for any k. So right now it hasn't been proven. We're just assuming that it is true. So uh, the sum of x is equal to 1 all the way to k is equal to um, k divided by 2 times k plus 1. Okay, so we're assuming that this statement is true. Right, because n is equal to k. Now, let's go to step 3. Step 3. Given that the statement is true for all values of k, prove that it will be true for n equals k plus 1. So what that means is, we've assumed that when n is equal to k, okay, in this formula here, when n is equal to k, that it is true. So now we need to prove that this statement is true, will also be true for k plus 1. Okay, so that's what mathematical induction means. Okay, if we can prove that this statement works for any value of k, if we can assume that this statement works for any value of k, and we can prove that if it works for k, it will work for k plus 1, then it's going to work for everything. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a diagram to illustrate this a bit later, but let's just do the hard maths first and then show you the diagram a bit later. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the formula out again, but instead of k, I'm going to write k plus 1 at the top. 
Okay, so I'm going to replace wherever it says k with k plus 1. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to prove that the left hand side is equal to the left hand to the right hand side, which is the hard part of all of this. Right, so far step one and step two have been really easy. Now step three will be slightly more difficult. So given that this statement is true, I'm going to have to use this statement to prove this statement. So before I try to start proving it, I'm just going to rewrite the right hand side to summarize it a little bit. So I have k plus 1 divided by 2, so I'm going to take out the common factor. I'm going to take out the factor of a half, so it's going to be half k plus 1. And inside this bracket, I have k plus 1 plus 1, so I'm going to rewrite it as k plus 2. So I've tidied up this statement a little bit. So now I have to prove that the sum of x equals 1 all the way to x is equal to k plus 1 will equal half k plus 1 k plus 2. Right? And this I'm going to call the left hand side and this part I'm going to call the right hand side. And I'm going to show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So I'm going to start working from the left hand side first. So working on left hand side first. All right. So I'm going to show the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and I'm just going to work on the left hand side first. So on the left hand side I have x equals 1, k plus 1. Uh, the sum of all the x's from 1 to k plus 1. Now what does this mean? This means that I'm going to add all the numbers from x is 1 to x is k and then I'm going to add k plus 1. Okay, so I'm relating this summation with the previous summation. Okay, that's what you always have to do. You have to relate the summation of k plus 1 with the summation of k if you want to prove it. And then I'm going to substitute the formula for the summation up to k from the previous assumed formula, which is that one. I'm going to substitute the expression from there into here. So I'm going to put k over 2 times k plus 1. And then I have to plus k plus 1 at the end. Okay, and then I am going to uh, expand this out so it becomes uh, k over 2 times k plus k over 2 times 1 plus k plus 1 and then I'm going to simplify it so it becomes k squared over 2 plus k over 2 plus k plus 1 and then you can see here I have um, two like terms in the middle which I'm going to uh, simplify into 1.5k plus 1 and then I'm going to take out the common factor of a half so it becomes half bracket k squared plus 3k plus 1 and then you can see we have a quadratic formula here which I can then factorize into k plus 1. Oops, uh, it should be a little 2 in the formula because half times 2 is equal to 1. So this quadratic formula then factorizes into k plus 1, k plus 2, which is equal to the right hand side. Okay, which is equal to the right hand side. So we have shown that the left hand side is true. Sorry, we have shown that. Let me just write it out. If the statement 
is true for n equals k, then it will also be true for n equals k plus 1, which I've just shown you here, right? Assuming that the sum of 1, the sum of x is equal to 1 all the way to k, assuming that is true, right, it will also be true for when we want to add up the numbers from 1 to k plus 1. So, therefore, we have proven that therefore we have proven that this state we have proven by mathematical induction that this statement will work for all values of n so you might say how does that prove it well i'm going to give you a uh uh, an analogy. Okay, let's say I give you a ladder. Okay, I'm going to draw a ladder for you. And let's say you are standing on the first rung in the ladder. So you're standing on the first rung. Okay, now we have, the first thing we did was we proved that you can get to the first rung. And the second thing we did was we proved that if you're standing on a rung, you can get to the next one. So if you're standing on rung number one, we have proven that you can get to rung number two. And if you're standing on rung number two, we have proven that you can get to rung number three. If you're standing on three, we've proven that you can get to four. So what does that mean? That means we have proven that you can get to any single rung on the ladder. Okay, and that's what mathematical induction means. If we can prove that you can get from any rung to the next rung, we have proven that you can stand on any rung on this ladder. So you can imagine the mathematical statement like um, that it is the same thing as the ladder okay and if you're standing on a rung it means that the statement is true for that rung and because we have proven that if you're standing on a rung you can get to the next rung and we have shown that it works for just the first rung we have shown that it will work on any rung Okay, I hope this helps you to understand what's going on. Uh, if it doesn't, then feel free to send me an email and I'll try to make a better video. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.